All right, come to Philly. I want you to be on the stream. You look good next to me. Yeah. What's your name? Ty. Ty. Taekwondo. Had no fear. Mm. Taekwondo. Is you do karate? I mean, you can say I break shit. Oh. <laughs> Tell him I said hi, man. Cute boy in Walmart said hi. Now, how old are you? Yeah, welcome to the dojo, baby, man. Have no fear, Taekwondo is here, man. Listen, if you struggle with your mouthpiece, you struggle finding out what to say to woman, I don't know how to be smooth. I don't know how to make her think about me. I don't know how to impact her. I don't know how to make her smile, make her blush. I just I just struggle figuring out what to say to woman. My mouthpiece is just not sharp. I don't have game. I just don't got it. If you're one of those dudes that think this shit is just natural, you born with it, you have it or you don't, have no fear. Taekwondo is here and we in the dojo, B. B. Now, my goal with this video, I'm going to be honest. Y'all seen the clips and how this opened and it started? My goal in this video is this going to be Everything in a man's mouthpiece. Talking to woman 101. This is going to be a very practical, simple, simplified, direct version of how to get your mouthpiece. How to start, you know, playing and being sharp and quick-witted in these moments that matter most in the everyday conversation and random situations, right? Now, listen. First, we've got to define what a mouthpiece is. If you're going to be listening and watching this video and improving something and you don't even know what you're improving, how the hell are you going to improve it? You get what I'm saying? Part of the mouthpiece that, that's so important and relevant when it comes to a man's mouthpiece is every word you choose builds on top of the last sentence you made or it at least paints a picture in some kind of way. Now, it also requires a level of audacity. It also requires a level of assertiveness, being bold. Because a lot of times, the, what you want to say is right in front of you. What you want to say is really a direct way to say it but are you bold enough to stand on what it is that you want to say hence some of these clips now y'all might hear my neighbor playing that music in the background but this is the reason i don't get noise complaints because we both be loud it's also a very good trademark of a mouthpiece if you are good at positioning and setting yourself up throughout your conversations meaning you can go into a conversation with a goal in mind i want to sell this car i want to give her my number I want to get this job throughout this interview. I already have my goal in mind. It's already clear up here. Now, I don't, I'm not strict on how I go about getting it. Now, you could look at this shit like I got tools in my belt like Batman, right? Batman might have a grappling hook, a smoke grenade, a, a smoke bomb, and a fucking Glock 19. Batman is not going to climb the building with a Glock 19. He's going to use the grappling hook. He's not going to disappear with the, with the grappling hook. He's going to do it with the smoke bomb. So a lot of times you got to look at each of these situations. It provides a unique opportunity to say different things. A lot of y'all just want the out of the box, black and white blueprint. Okay, so I should just introduce myself. Good eye contact. Shake her hand. Nice to meet you. No. Because as y'all see in some of these clips, like this one. Tell him I said hi, man. Cute boy in Walmart said hi. Now how old are you? He, she, a girl on the phone and he walks up to her and says, Tell him I said hi. That's the only opportunity he had in this unique situation to say something like that. He might have said, who are we on the phone with, friend? He might have said, uh, you know, tell whatever, tell my friend I said hi. Or, or something, whatever he says that is unique to this situation. That he's bold enough to say. If you really think about it, when somebody tell you that's rude, that's disrespectful. Yo, somebody having a conversation. Who are you to interrupt? How dare you be so rude? Guess what? The mouthpiece makes its own rules. It knows how to thread the needle. It knows how to insert and be assertive in a way which is charming, which is charismatic, which is smooth. And the reason the mouthpiece can do that is because it's creative. It's open-minded. It's, it's broad. It doesn't see one way. It sees any way to go about getting what it wants. A huge up part that a lot of y'all got to keep in mind with y'all mouthpiece is every time you open your mouth, Every action you do, even your nonverbal communication, even your body language, your eye contact, all of this. Everything you do, say, or think about is presenting yourself to the world. So it was a situation where a guy was on stream and he was like, hey, Ty, I was in, I was approached this woman and she was with her father. And he checked me like, what do you think you're doing? Like aggressively. He said it more aggressive. 
And I'm like, why are you surprised? Nigga, that's her father. Why wouldn't he be overprotective of his daughter? He challenged you. He tested you. He wanted to see how you was going to react. Now, you failed the challenge or you failed the test when you didn't stand your ground and double down boldly on what it is you want or why you were talking to his daughter. And you could have added a respectful twist in that. Something along the lines of, oh, excuse me. I, you know, I didn't want to be rude, but your daughter caught my attention. My name is Todd and I wanted to intro my, introduce myself if that's okay with you. Now, he might even challenge you more. What do you want with my daughter? Blah, blah, blah. And at that point, you use it, you're using the situation to say, excuse me, I'm going to be respectful. You know, and you're using what's in front of you to cook up what you say. You wouldn't just say some random shit here because it has nothing to do with the situation. You can't connect a dot that has no connection. That's what the mouthpiece is really good at doing. Like I said, I, don't, I can even use situations out of approaching woman. I could be a car salesman. And I find out my client has a family. So now I connect that dot to say, oh, we have the perfect, perfect family size sedan at a great price, a newer, a newer one and older models. If you're not looking for something brand new for the kids not to ruin, blah, blah, blah. Like I might even throw all this in my wording because every word I'm saying, every sentence I'm saying is painting the picture and getting me closer to what I want. Now, listen, I wanted to use this other video right here. To show you how simple and direct the mouthpiece can be. What you say? You ain't been ready for a Toronto girl, huh? Oh! Hey, hey, no, hey, hey, tell, tell me something. What's up? Listen, a Toronto female will change your life. You see how this? Shout out to my Miami kid. You, you see how this one sentence? You said smooth can't handle a Toronto girl or something along those lines. It made her ch now challenge him and say, oh, a Toronto girl would change your life. Like that one sentence set the whole alley -oop up. Why? Because he had in mind like, oh, I'm trying to set my homie up with the, you know, with the shorty or whatever. And all it took was that one sentence because it's how he threaded the needle. It's how he took advantage of the situation and the opportunity that it was presented. He couldn't have scripted that. He couldn't have planned that. I mean, in the moment, it may seem like it was planned or like, it, it, like he, he just knew what to say. No, he didn't. He came up with it on the spot. That's the thing about the mouthpiece. It's quick. It, it's lightweight. It can move. It can shift. It can adapt. It's not stuck and it's not rigid. It's not, it's not stiff. You have to be loose in order to be smooth. That's a big part of the mouthpiece. A lot of y'all get stuck in your head. Y'all freeze. Y'all hesitate. You're already slowing yourself down. You're already killing all your momentum. You have to just be going and flowing. Now, I'm going to give y'all three practical steps that I think can make this clear to anybody before we go deeper, before we use other examples, before I make more videos, and before you even tap into the Patreon. Because as my members know, Patreon is a whole different ballpark. YouTube, we, we keep this entertaining. We keep it light tone. We, we add a bunch of different shit on the YouTube. Patreon is strictly business. The VIP section of the dojo, bait, B. And if you step over there, you better be ready to get your top blown off. But I'm going to get these three practical steps because I want everybody to leave and say, all right, what, so what can I do? How can I prove my mouthpiece? What, what's the next steps? Step number one, start being more aware of your goal or your purpose when you talk or before you talk or before you do something. Because not only this, will this help you stay on track, and what I mean by on track is a lot of y'all have random ass conversations. Oh, what's your favorite color? Uh, what's your favorite food? Uh, you know, what's your favorite season? What's your favorite movie? And y'all not even connecting the dots from this. You know, what's your favorite movie? Oh, oh what's your favorite genre of movies? Oh, I like scary movies. And then, you know, she said something like that. Then I said, okay, well, you know, Insidious just came out. It's this new scary movie I heard is lit. We should go see it this Saturday. I, all I did was connect the dot based on what she just said because the, the, a new opportunity was presented. Me knowing I want to spend time with her. That's the goal. Spend time with her. Go on a date or, or get to know her or make a connection. And I just did all of that at once because of the opportunity which presented itself because I have my goal in mind when I'm talking. And if you're not keeping yourself on track, that's how y'all oftentimes get into these boring ass conversations. Y'all waste words. Y'all say sentences that mean nothing. I mean, if we like transcripted y'all conversations between you and a person who has a tough ass mouthpiece, We'll be able to look back and see how many and many instances during their conversation, they always their their next sentence correlated with their last one. They build on top of each other. They all lead somewhere. You know, you're not talking to somebody with a mouthpiece and asking yourself, 
well, where is this going? What, what do, like, what, what's, what's up? Like, why am I here? Why are we talking? A person won't say that. They'll feel the tension through the conversation. They'll feel the flirtingness. They'll feel the elusiveness, the intrigue. They'll feel all the allure from the conversation because the way the person purposefully dances towards what they want. See, you get to move with some grace. You get to move with some poise. You get to move with, with some nimbleness because you can take your time. You know what you want. You're not moving. You're not reacting. You're being decisive. You're deciding what you want to go next. You're asserting. You're leading. Now, number two, you got to ask yourself, what? Number two, <laughs> number two, you got to ask yourself, what's the most direct way to get what I want? And the reason I say this is because you will never get a mouthpiece beating around the bush, walking on eggshells, ducking smoke, avoiding challenges, running from the elephant in the room. All of this shit is the killer of the mouthpiece because you can't apply pressure when you're avoiding pressure. You can, How am I going to fucking fold under pressure or duck smoke when I'm the pressure? You don't. So already, this leads into number three. Start creating a habit of being assertive. People think assertiveness is, oh, I'm alpha male, I'm diagnosed and blah, 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 blah. All that shit is is a habit. You either have a habit of ducking smoke, dodging, avoiding, or running from fight or flight, you know, fight or flight situation. You create these habits or you break them. So you need to create a habit of being assertive, a habit of speaking your mind, a habit of, a habit of being concise with your words, a habit of being able to call out the elephant in the room, being able to be bold, being able to be very keen and observant of opportunities that pop up during your conversation. And either you do that or you're creating these habits by paying attention. Or every time you duck smoke, everybody, every time you run from that woman you know you wanted to talk to, every time you bite your tongue when you know you wanted to say something, you now create a habit which is killing your mouthpiece. So listen, appreciate y'all. 330K pack on the way. <laughs> Dojo to the moon, 400K. We on that ass, you dig. Dojo to the moon to Saturn. And we leaving the solar system to learn so we don't even know we exist, baby.